Hey, this is Wes McDermott, and in this Unity Cookie Quick Tip, we're going to take a look at using Algorithmic's Bitmap to Material 2.1. Bitmap to Material 2.1 offers an optimized solution for mobile game developers to generate material maps at runtime directly onto their target device, and thus dramatically reducing the game's installation size. B2M is not only used for mobile application, but can be used in any Unity project where optimization is key and you're looking to reduce the size of the binary. You import a single diffuse texture, and B2M will take care of the generating the rest. So if we take a look at this diagram, you can see that we have an image, which is just a diffuse texture, is input into B2M, and then it generates all of the other maps for you, and you pretty much just get a full material. So you can see that we've got our diffuse, uh, normal, specular bump, AO, ambient occlusion, height, and curvature. So all of these maps are generated for you at runtime, which means all these maps, they don't have to be imported into your Unity project and take up all that space. They're going to get generated at runtime. So whatever that original image is, that diffuse texture, whatever the size of that guy is, when you import, that's going to be the size of that entire material for you. So it ends up being an amazing way to really reduce the size of your overall binary. So what we have is just an empty Unity project here. And the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, after I have purchased uh, Bitmap to Material, I want to use that in Unity scene. So uh, let's go ahead and import that. So uh, what I'm going to do is just just um, take a look at what the folder contents are. So once you get bitmap to material, it comes with the PDF and it comes with a few substance files. So you have uh, the B2M no grunge, uh, B2M, uh, and this is for the 2.1 version, um, real time mobile. So this is uh, bitmap to material now supported on mobile, which is awesome. And uh, B2M uh, just with, with the grunge maps and everything. So you uh, also here are the grunge map um, SBSAR files. And uh, you also have some presets, and uh, there's some sample textures uh, to uh, check out. So what we're going to do is uh, I want to look at the real-time mobile, uh, So since that's a new feature of 2.1. So let's just drag and drop that guy right here into our assets. So we'll load him in, and then uh, we'll also just grab uh, a few of these uh, textures here. So these are our diffuse textures. And let's uh, place these into our assets folder as well. And everything is getting imported in. And we'll take a look at how bitmap to material works. Okay, so uh, what we want to do, and uh, actually one other thing I'll note about this is that um, for this to work, you need to be on version 4.1 because um, the uh, substance engine, the mobile substance engine, is uh, native in Unity 4.1. And so then you also have bitmap to material 2.1. So just a little housekeeping stuff there. So first, uh, let's go and uh, just create like a quick plane or something. So let's just say that, you know, we're working on a ground plane here. So just focus in on this guy and um, I'll just zero all this stuff out and then hit F on the keyboard to refocus this again. Okay, so we have this plane and we want to go ahead and start with our bitmap to material. So uh, in Unity 4, uh, if I'm working in kind of the new project browser, I'm just going to click this little arrow here and you can see that we've got our material and these are the texture outputs. And you can see that by default everything is the, these uh, textures are nothing. There's nothing happening here. So we're just going to drag and drop the material onto our uh, asset. And now we have this material applied. And so if we go ahead and take a look, now we're doing this on mobile. So you can see that we've got the, the shader is the bump specular. Now I'm not actually in a mobile project right now. So you can see it's PC Max standalone. I didn't actually switch that. So uh, what we will do is uh, go over to our mobile shader and we would want to choose bump specular in the mobile. And so now what we have is uh, s slots here for our, uh, this is our base diffuse texture and we have our normal map. And then we have all of our um, substance materials here. So if we kind of just scroll down, you can see that we have this, uh, here I'll close this up, you can see that we have this uh, bump diffuse texture here, this texture 2D, and it's none, it's it's asking for an input. So this is where you're going to drag your texture. So we have a couple substance, or excuse me, a couple uh, just target textures here. And uh, let's just say that, you know, we downloaded these off the internet, or this is something part of your texture library uh, that you want to use. So to get started, what you want to do is just drag and drop one of these texture files right here into this texture slot. And um, Substance has already generated a material out of this. So in our preview, you can see that we've got um, the material applied. And in our actual project, let's see, in our 3D view here as we start to move in, We've got our texture applied as well. Scroll this guy up to the top, and you can see that um, we've got a diffuse and a normal map. So if uh, we go ahead and take a look at this, you can see like here's our diffuse, and here's the normal map that uh, bitmap to material has, has uh, created for us from that diffuse texture. 
Okay, so uh, the next thing we'll probably do, just so we can kind of see what's going on here a little bit better, is we'll just uh, grab ourselves a directional light and kind of place this in the scene and have a little bit of, so we can affect our specular. Okay, so you can see that we also have specular highlights on this guy as well. And let's just kind of move this so it's out of the way. Okay, so let's get in and taking out what this does. So, um, Right off the bat, I will tell you that if there, uh, with the version I'm working with right now, there's a small bug. So um, if for some reason you have these uh, parameters here and you're not seeing all of the sliders, all you need to do is just um, kind of hit this little uh, triangle here, just just bring it up and then hit it again to review all the parameters and then everything will show up. So in this case, it looks like everything was working okay, but if you run into that problem, that's all you need to do is just toggle that little triangle. Okay, so right off the bat, we've got our texture, um, and let's uh, let's talk about like what the real power of this bitmap to material is, is that it's going to allow us to take one diffuse map, and it's going to allow us to generate other maps from that. So it's going to allow us to generate, let's see, we've got our diffuse texture, which you see here in our preview, we've got our specular texture that it generated for us, and our normal map texture. So one of the real key benefits to this is that the diffuse texture is all that we're working with. So this is our original asset. So by default, this guy is 256 kilobytes. And so since this is the file that we've actually imported into our um, into our project, the other files, so our specular and our normal map, are not going to get generated until they're actually needed. So that's why the substance material or the substance texture is very small. So it allows us to generate two other maps from one map. So it's really good on mobile if you're trying to uh, bring the size of all, you know, the size of your actual binary down to lightweight so that you can deliver it, you know, through the App Store or however, you know, Google Play or whatever that you're using. Uh, it brings the actual, you know, binary download size, you know, a lot smaller because you're using less textures. So we'll talk a little bit more about that output stuff here in just a little bit. But uh, let's just say for this guy, as a demonstration of something else that's really cool, is that, um, you know, reusing elements on mobile is very important and let's just say that we have you know some texture here and we want to be able to tile this texture however in our case this isn't a tileable texture so let's do this let's select this plane and let's duplicate it so we've got this guy duplicated and we'll move it over to the side and we'll use vertex snapping so I'll hold down V uh, move my um, mouse over a vertex and just snap that so you can see that uh, you know we're placing these guys together let's do it again uh, let's uh, hold down let's see let's move this guy out of the way and let's just vertex snap this guy again and let's do it again one more time so we're kind of basically you know patching together a level here we've got you know it's creating a modular level uh, we're reusing the same material across all these um, assets so it's you know optimized we're using the same texture however the problem is for this ground plane is that we don't have a tileable texture and you can see the seam this doesn't look too good at all so the real one of the things that's really powerful about substance is even though we don't actually have a tileable texture, it can make a tileable texture for us. So one of the best settings that you have under global is this make a tile method. So we're going to drop this down, and I like to use the splat method. So once I activate that, you can see that it already starts to generate a tileable texture. And you know, from far away, you can obviously see some pattern, some pattern and tiling happening here. But as we zoom in, it looks you know pretty not too bad. But we can actually tweak some of this stuff. So we can come over to our splat angle. And let's see, let's zoom out here. We can go over to our splat angle and we can actually start to tweak this a bit. So we can actually make this even more random looking as we start to just increase the splat angle. You can see that we can get something that's a bit more, gen or, well, a bit more random looking. So as we start to pull, you know, zoom out here, you can see that's, that's a little bit better looking. As we zoom in closer and we start to kind of move around like we're looking around our level, um, you know, if our character's down, you know, closer to the ground, he's moving out, you know, this looks actually pretty good. And we can continue to just grab, you know, one of these planes and continue to build our level. So let's say that, you know, we're starting to kind of patch this out to the side here. So again, I'm just continuing to snap. And as you see, each time I snap another a grid here, if we're, you know, building this kind of level on, on the tile or on the grid, so to speak, as we start to snap this guy together, we start to get, you know, a nice tileable texture here with this. And so that's one of the key benefits of Substance, uh, bitmap to material. Let's take a look at some of the other settings that we have. So as we scroll down, 
you know we've got you know like I said the tile method and then we've got diffuse so we can do some cool things with diffuse uh, it's almost like a, a little miniature uh, photo editing application so we what we can do is we can choose to sharpen the 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 material or excuse me the diffuse texture so say you know you took it with a digital camera or something a little blurry um, you can actually sharpen it right here so you can see how it looks uh, we start to pull some sharpen uh, brings a little bit more crisp detail out of this uh, we can change the hue so if we want to we can completely just change the hue of this entire uh, image here we can in increase or decrease the saturation if we want uh, we can also work with some again some more image edit controls so we can adjust the brightness and, and maybe the contrast here so we might want to you know Increase the brightness a little bit, maybe increase the contrast some. You know, just again some more image editing type capabilities. Uh, we also have the ability to check uh, how the normal is going to be um, created here with the relief. So you've got the output normal format. You can choose between DirectX and OpenGL. Um, you can increase the normal strength. So you know, if we pull this all the way down, this is the normal map not actually affecting anything. And if we you know and start to increase this value, we get more. Uh, information in the normal map here. So we'll pull this forward. Uh, we can change uh, several of these settings to basically you know, tweak or adjust how the normal map is getting created from that diffuse map. And so we also have the shape recognition, so that's going to also help in the way that their normal map is derived from the diffuse. So again, we can pull this, you know, we can check out the intensity. You can also uh, change the angle a bit on how that's going to be generating that normal map. Uh, we also have the ability to you know, control how the diffuse texture is created. So, for instance, if we pull this, uh, or if we check out the specular settings here, we've got the the specular diffuse influence. So, you can see how that's working. If it's a little bit easier to see here in this preview, uh, so as we start to kind of adjust, you can see that we're getting a bit more um, increased hi specular highlight. We've got specular saturation, uh, sharpen, so we can you know get a little bit different effects there. And then we've also got kind of our specular levels in and out. So this is almost like adjusting the gamma of the image so it's it's like um, the histogram uh, levels in and out of this image so we can start to change and tweak uh, how our specular is going to work without actually having to go into like say a, an image editing application and actually tweak the specular map itself we can actually just do that right here through the bitmap to material properties and then one other thing that we've got that's pretty interesting is the lighting tab so let's say again you, you got this off the internet or you you know took it with a digital camera and maybe there's a little bit of lighting information baked into the um, baked into the actual texture so there's some shadow or there's some highlights that you want to you know basically pull out of the image you can do that with the light equalizer so as we start to pull this forward you can see that it basically just you know devoids the entire diffuse texture of like you know, shadow and light information. And you can cancel the highlights uh, of this and you can also do a shadow cancel as well if you want to tweak that. So what you end up having is uh, a lot of control through these settings. If we uh, go ahead and take a look at what happens here in this section of the generated textures, these are the, the textures that are actually generated from this procedure. So for instance, um, we have a couple things here. We've got, as I mentioned before, we've got a diffuse texture, we've got a specular map, and we also have the normal. So if we go back to and check that out, we've got two textures here. We've got a diffuse and a normal, and then you also have this channel drop down. So what this does is it allows you to say from this diffuse texture, it, it, this output allows you to define what output is basically going to be placed in the alpha channel. So certain shaders, like for instance the mobile uh, bumped specular shader, will derive specular information. It will basically look at the alpha channel of that diffuse and pull use that as basically your spec map. And so in our case we can say that hey we want the specular output to be placed in the alpha channel for this. So uh, you may have a custom shader that works this way but uh, what's nice is that the uh, substance allows you to choose wit, uh, which out of the outputs that it would generate are going to be placed in the alpha channel. And then you also have uh, the ability to tile and offset that as well. And then finally at the bottom we have our you know basically the target width and height and the format and load behavior. So for instance if you are generating this texture at 512 you, you can actually change this to 1024 if you're working on you know maybe a, a, a more powerful mobile platform or if you're working on a project where you're supporting multiple platforms maybe a desktop versus um, you know mobile you can actually dynamically change the size of this texture and you can change the format so by default you're going to want to leave it at compressed and in the end what you have here is some key settings which is a load behavior and you've got a couple things you've got build um, on level bake and keep 
substance, bake and discard substance, and use caching. So if we take a look at build on level load, this will regenerate the substance every time a level needs it. If we take a look at the be uh, excuse me the bake and keep substance, the bake and keep will bake the substance as a bitmap for fast loading, but it will keep the substance source in case you want to animate it in game. So if you want to be able to change any of the substance parameters through code, you can still do that. Then you have the bake and discard, which actually bakes the textures and then discards. And then finally, you have use caching. So what use caching is going to do is it uh, will generate the substance only once during the first loading and then it will save it as a bitmap on the device now if you're targeting a mobile platform this is what you want to do you want your load behavior to be uh, to be set to use caching and then once you have your settings you can just click apply and then you're ready to roll so that's going to uh, take care of this uh, bitmap to material quick tip for unitycookie.com as you can see, uh, algorithmic substances and bitmap to material are pretty powerful tools to place in your arsenal, especially if you're working with mobile games.